everybody get in here. Listen, if you're a returning subscriber, then you know how this thing goes. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome and hello. All right, so we got a not, we got a, a little bit of a loaded little hot topic segment going right now, okay? So we're talking about Lil Nas X. We're going to be talking about Whitney Houston and Ray J. And we're also going to be talking about Ken and Diera. All right, so um, let's get started. But before we get started, actually, before we get started, Let's take a word from our sponsor. Now, remember, this is the perfect time. It's holiday season right around the corner. This is the time to go ahead and cop you some Manscaped for your husband or for yourself. All right, so take a look at this sponsor, and then we'll be right back. Hey, what's poppin', everybody? It's your boy, Armand, and this video is sponsored today by Manscaped, home of the Lawnmower 3.0. Combining third generation innovations in design, power, and hygiene, the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer with skin safe technology is the perfect tool for an incredible grooming experience. Compact design, the diamond textured, no slip grip, LED, and compact design help you navigate all your nooks and crannies, wet or dry. Advanced engineering, upgraded 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer features precision engineered blades for confident trimming below the waist. This thing is waterproof, guys. Safely take care of business in the lawnmower. The only shock being on your partner's face for the trim. Job well done. You guys can use my code Armand20 to receive 20% off of this fantastic product, okay? So make sure you guys go and check that out and go get yours because guess what? I got mine and I love it. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. Make sure you use my code at checkout, Armand20. All right, y'all, so let's talk about Little Nas X. Now, this is not really, really news, but it's news if you're like a boy who likes boys. But first of all, he came out with his new record, um, Holiday, um, which is a dope record visually. Um, the record itself, it's okay to me. I don't think it's an Old Town Road. I don't think it's Panini. However, visually, it's really nice. It's a really dope record. Um, they, you can tell that he has a, they put a lot of effort. Um, the budget, he had a really good budget for the video. So I like it. Um, you can tell he's a creative person and he has an artistic side to him, very artistic. Um, but um, that's not what the girls are talking about. The girls are talking about how um, he slid in there that he likes to bottom on the low. Hey. Can I pop shit? I might bottom on the low, but I top shit. Um, which which insinuates to me that little Nas X is a bottom, which I would expect nothing more or nothing less. I mean, you know that he gives big twink energy, and I think that that's hot. You know what I'm saying? He's got a nice little body. I'm sure a lot of people are really are ready to top little Nas X, but um. I thought that was interesting though, because remember our good friend Bobby Lights, friend of the show. Um, you know he's been interested in uh, in and in, in, uh, Little Nas X for a while, and he's been trying to get Little Nas X's attention. However, Little Nas X has been kind of paying him dust, and Bobby Lights actually called into the show one time, and I asked him about it, and he basically told me that he thinks that Little Nas X is a bottom like him. Okay, and so, just before I, you I'm leave, can started. you let everybody know that you are just trolling Little? Nas X, you know that he does not like you, right? Yeah, listen, guys. Lil Nas yeah, let's talk about how I you felt at the real. VMAs, girl, because that was the curve heard across the world, uh, big. People really think I'm in love with him. He is cute. He is, and and he's. he's I don't think he's really gay. I think he was trolling. I don't think he he's really gay, but. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I and this is what people didn't realize that at the VMAs we actually had conversations, we were talking and all that, and it's just like what was portrayed again, what I ended up posting and recording and putting on my Instagram versus what actually what we actually talked about, then what the cameras caught and looked like he was just igging me. But really at the end of the day, he's winning an award. He ain't got time. He don't even know me from a can of paint that well. You know, I'm like right. I know he knows of me. Trust me, he knows of me. I asked him, I was like, Did you see what happened online and he told me? And like he was like, Yeah, he did. Did he you slap know, your case? You, I wanted to have my I wish he would have, because then that would have gave me some type of, you know, incentive that he's actually interested in me. But he's he's young. I feel like he made me, I think he might be a bottom like me. I don't know. Oh. I think, I don't know. And so he feels like because they're both bottoms, um, they probably didn't work out. And what do you know? Lil Nas X is a bottom. So for all you tops out there with that big top energy, Lil Nas X is ready for it to be creamed and pied on the low. 
And he says he does top stuff, but I don't think he's top, talking about cakes. I think he's more so topping the charts. So either way, you know, shout out to Little Nas X for cakes plunged and being himself now as, as far as the v video and the song because i know a lot of you guys are like oh, mom, we don't care some of you guys don't care about it some of you women are like i don't give a damn if Lil nas x is getting topped well we do okay we care if Lil nas x wants to get some we want to know what we what you know what can what can go down what what are the possibilities how far can we go so for the guys that like guys, we want to know what's he giving up. And Lil Nas X is slowly letting us know that, hey, listen, I'm gay gay. Now, here's the thing. Me and my friends and some of my compadres, we were talking about um, how we felt like he's not really gay. But he uses the gay when he needs to sell a record. I don't know. I still kind of feel like that 50-50 because I do feel like with this record, while it's a nice record and he has a huge fan base and a nice built-in fan base, Right? I still don't know if this is going to be a Panini moment. I don't know if this is going to be an Old Town Road moment. Um, and even in the song, you could hear him talking about how, you know, he's hearing the whispers of people calling him a one hit wonder. He's hearing the whispers of people saying that he's flopped. He's hearing the whispers of the people saying that, listen, he doesn't have another record. And to be honest with you, I don't think he has another record. And, 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 and I don't think he had another record. So I feel like to throw out something about, you know, being a bottom on the low, I felt like he was, that was a little, one of those, that was one of those things w to get the people talking, to go listen to the record. Um, so, you know, he's bringing, he's pulling you in by any means necessary to get you to, you know, listen to this record. So I think it was a strategic play to throw that out there because you knew the people would be talking about it. And let's be clear, you need people to be talking about your music and in order to go listen to it, in order to get those streams. And, you know, it just creates a domino effect. For the record to be successful, you need hype, you need conversation, you need people streaming. And so why not say that you like to bottom? Um, and then that's gonna get the people to go listen to the record to see what you're talking about. That was literally the only thing he mentioned about his sexuality. I thought it was just interesting that he threw that in there though. Like, we didn't really need to know that you bottom. Are you are you gonna come bottom for all of America? Are we ever gonna, are we all gonna get to see what it's like? We don't need to know that. I mean, just keep that to yourself and whoever you're bottoming for, in my mind. Oh, Ken and Deera. So a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about, it. I don't even know if I'm saying that woman's name right. I don't even know if I'm saying that woman's name right, um, but um, they're YouTubers, big, big, big uh, couple channel. And um, Ken has been recently uh, spotted rubbing a girl's booty, cheating on De'Ara. Now, two years ago, there were some rumors of him cheating on um, De'Ara because he was on FaceTime with a girl. Um, they And then they kind of dismissed that. They both tried to say that the girl was trying to extort Ken for some money and so that it, it wasn't true. So they had kind of got over it. Now, Ken is saying that he never was cheating on um, De'Ara, that that never happened. Um, it was nothing like that. He was just outside talking to her. Either way, you did cheat because you touched the girl's booty, okay? You rubbed off. And now people are mad at Ken. They're just like, oh my God, Ken, um, you know, how could you do this to De'Ara? You know, we love you. We love you. We love these couple channels. Here's the thing. I don't really trust YouTube channels, especially YouTube couple channels, because I feel like when things start getting dry, when the algorithm starts throwing you out, you need a good controversy to get the people talking. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was fake. But now if it's real, here's the thing. It just goes to show you that no matter how sexy and beautiful and fashionable and rich and fly or how many nail, how, what kind of nail combo Diera puts on her, on her nails, you know, she can still be cheated on. And Ken can still be cheated on. They're still human beings. And they can be fly and rich and do house tours and do that and drive fast cars and Teslas and Lamborghinis and all of this. But if the relationship ain't right, if people ain't happy, it don't matter. Okay? And to me, it feels like there's something missing. For this woman, for his girlfriend to be so fly, so rich, so cute, you know, she's she's everything. She really, really is. Something is missing for him to be wandering. For a girl that's not even cute as her. Or, you know, and, and probably don't have the clout like she do. Probably don't have the finances. And I think the girl got a kid. So, what would make him still be stepping out and cheating? Yes, could, could we just blame it on the fact that he's a man? Sure. But at the same time, I feel like there's something missing in their relationship that they need to that they need to hone in on, you know? A lot of times people think that, oh, you just, you're just a dirty, dirty dog. Maybe in this situation, um, they have underlying issues that they haven't dealt with, you know? And maybe they're not as happy as they portray on YouTube. Maybe it's getting bored. Maybe it's getting stagnant. Maybe their lives are so invested on the internet where they don't really have a personal relationship. You just never know. 
So I think it's interesting when these kind of situations happen, especially with couples that are perceived to be, you know, um, the Jay-Z and Beyonce's, if you will, they all have issues and something that's missing. So I wish them the best of luck. I, I, I don't wish any you know, demise of, of relationships, but more so, I think that they need to figure out what the issue is and what's missing. And Ken needs to figure out what's going on within himself and what's what's missing either within him or within the relationship. And they need to have a conversation about it move to, and to move forward. So that's what I think about that situation, okay? Now, Ray J and Whitney Houston. Now, first of all, a lot of people, when I posted this on my uh, Instagram, a lot of people were like, well, we knew this already. We knew this is not news and da da da. We technically didn't know. We heard rumors, rumblings of things, but we didn't know that Ray J was porking Whitney Houston for a fact. However, one of my favorite guys to interview, even though I haven't interviewed him yet, my mind, I want to interview him because he has no problem spilling the tea or just talking. Like every interview he does, he's going to give you some tea. And this is Young Berg, okay, aka Hitmaker. So he sat down with Nori um, over at J Drink Champs, and they were talking about, you know, industry stuff. Honestly, I didn't even watch the full thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. Somebody sent, sent it to me and said, "Listen." Um, Hitmaker said that Ray J was smashing uh, Whitney, so I went and scrolled to that part, okay? So anyway, but I knew that that uh, he was going to spill some tea because I'm like, he always spilled tea. Um, he was he even spilled some tea on Nicki Minaj one day. He goes on these interviews, and Youngberg just talks, okay? So anywho, Youngberg goes on um, Drink Champs and just starts spilling tea, child. And I'm like, are you supposed to say that? Are you supposed to spill this tea? Starts talking about, you know, he going, you know, taking shots of Patron with Whitney Houston. Um, she's chain smoking cigarettes back to back. They was asking, was there a little orange involved? But he didn't want to really get into that because then if, you know, if the bump was out, you know, he probably would have had to hit it too. But no shade, I feel like he did hit the bump with Whitney Houston. And I'm going to be the first one to tell you, right hand of God, it's no shade. If Whitney Houston would have got in the car with me at the VMAs or wherever we was going, okay, and she pulled out a bag of the good, 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 high, 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 of the most high, I would have definitely hit that motherfucker, okay? I would have hit that bag with Whitney Houston, and I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. It's about an experience, okay? I would there's there's two people in this world that I would hit the bag with, Whitney Houston, and Wendy Williams. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what, Ray J, I'm sure he hit it too. And see, but the thing was, Hitmaker probably didn't want to spill that tea because Hitmaker was in that bag, see, hitting that bag, smoking them cigarettes and drinking that Patron with Whitney and Ray J. No, Ray J was hitting that bag because the way that Ray J was sitting there full like that on the conversation with Princess. Ray J hits him a bag. Don't you get it twisted. So anyway, um, so they, he was talking about that and he was talking about how he went up the stairs um, and, and into the hotel room because he gave Ray J the wrong key uh, and, and somehow he ended up in a room with Whitney Houston and Ray J and Whitney Houston had her pants down and her panties off. I take it from Ray J smashed everything. Take it from there. Ray J smashed everything. Yes, yes, uh -huh. At one point, we was back to back tour buses Ooh. on a tour. Imagine me and Ray J on a sexy can Ooh. I tour. I am picturing what's going on. Y'all story. How, how do we get to rest in peace? <laughs> <laughs> Whitney Houston. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, right. I'm like, you talking about knocking right shit right. down. Unless we talking about rest in peace to the pool nine. You better leave the rest in peace. Kill the pool nine. We gotta go. Okay, go. Okay, right, right, we gotta right, take right. it. People, some people will okay, say. Okay, okay, so time out. Hold on, hold on. Let me just figure out where we going Ray here. Ray J right has now. a long Ray J. Let me figure out where we going here. Because I feel like you about to give us a Ray J Whitney story? Yeah. This is where we going with it? Let's go, let's go, young bird. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. So, Cause in my mind, I, listen, I probably hey, would've, yo, I probably Billy, sniffed yo, Whitney, yo, like, yo. fuck <laughs> My business partner is in the corner looking like, you can't even look at me right now. So look, okay. we in Atlanta, Atlanta. and um, we stay in at this hotel, and then um, right, we have a show at Compound Nightclub. I remember so Compound. So I go get in the car with Ray, and Whitney Houston's in the car with us. Mm. So like Whitney was a gangster though. Mm -hmm, she was yeah. a real nigga. Like New York, New Jersey. I'm talking about like we get the compound. Mm. 
Well, first and foremost, do you understand what I'm saying? We took Whitney Houston to Compound to perform Sexy Can I. I'm feeling like you're saying kidnapped. No, no, no. Okay. no. Yeah. She, she was with it. Was she, with was it. With she was with it. She was with it. Right. Right. So we in a car. Do y'all hide her? Do y'all put a hoodie on her or no, something? Like, so we you go just to the back. Whitney. We right. park in the back. I'm like, damn, like, we need some drinks. She like... Rolled down the window, sent the security in. Nigga come out with the jumbo Patron. It's back when niggas drinking Patron. Right. Me and Whitney are throwing back Patron. I'm talking about out, like mm. crazy, crazy. She's smoking mm. chain smoking squares. It was a, mm -hmm. it was a vibe. So we go mm. in the club. We do sexy can I? Now mind you, damn. Cocaine is Ray involved. J. Ray, no, listen, okay. Ray J. I, yeah, listen, it's bad. okay. My bad. Don't look that way. So, uh, <laughs> so, so look. Don't mind we, <laughs> hotel and like my hype man I think my hype man and one of the people that was with me left so like I had extra mm -hmm. hotel rooms mm -hmm. so Ray come to my hotel and he like hey, yo Berg um, I got these bitches that I brought back like I know you got extra rooms so go ahead and like give me your keys to the other rooms so I'm why like, is Ray J impressed <laughs> <laughs> DMX Ray <laughs> <laughs> you know, his impersonations is on point <laughs> that's his other job yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so I give him the keys to the room but I gave him one wrong key so I'm looking for Ray J I'm going through and I'm like man I'm Go to his room and look for this nigga. Mm. I go in a room. I don't know where this is going. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of nervous about this. Whitney Houston taking her pants off. I walk in the room like she getting naked in Ray J room, and she like, get out of here, young bird. And I'm like, oh my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I ran out the room. Damn man. I right, one too bad. I don't know how to answer this right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have thought I've had every answer to everything. <laughs> And you are <laughs> fucking me up right now. Because I know there's consequences to what I want to say after that. Say what you want to say. No. <laughs> I don't know what I want to say because this is, I wasn't ready. So I wasn't either, nigga. So you're basically saying you saw Whitney Houston naked. Yeah. Jeez Louise, Papa Jeez. I don't know if I make some noise for this. Bobby Brown might be mad. Nah, we love Bobby. Oh, no, that's right. Bobby Whitney. was over. That's right. The Bobby we was love old. Bobby. Yeah. We love Whitney. Yeah. We love all that shit. Right. I'm just telling y'all my life story. story. Like, this shit that's is like, just my life. I can't that's make like this shit up. Ciao. Ciao. That's a lot of tea. But you know, they say that Ray J really did smash everything. You know, he made the Kardashians famous. And I'm like, it's been rumblings in the street that Ray J has just been that guy that has pulled his thing thing out and really, you know, given it and gave it to the girls. But back in the day, no shade. Ray J used to be that guy, especially that one wish. Ray J used to be fine, okay? It was what it was. Ray J used to be fine. So, and you know, and I probably would have gave it to Ray J too if I was Whitney, period. And so it's no harm, no foul. Ray J was knocking down Whitney Houston. Not everybody can say that. So I'm not mad at it, but that's some tea. Now everybody's like, oh, we knew about it. We knew about it, but it wasn't confirmed. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I want to know what it was like, though, to hit Whitney, uh, not Wendy Williams. Ooh, child. <laughs> I want to know what it was like to hit Whitney Houston, Ray J. Call into the show. Come on over. Tell us what it was like to, to, to bang out Whitney. Was she hitting high notes when you hit her, when you hit it from the back? What was that like? Um, so anyway, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about this whole thing, about, you know, Lil Nas X being a, a bottom, um, Ken and Deara, and uh, do you think Hitmaker talks too much? How do you feel about Ray J potentially hitting it from the back on Whitney Houston while they got big lines broke up across the table in somewhere in Beverly Hills or Calabasas? You know what I mean? I'm sure they got big old boom, boom, boom. And they just, every time, every time Ray J hit it, she hit a bump. He hit her, and she hit it. Okay, bitches? Yeah. Woo! I'm every woman. You know, it's just hit. It's hit for hit. Okay? Let me stop. They probably was in there getting stupid fool. <laughs> My God. Uh, but anyway, listen, let me stop playing these games. But listen, y'all, I love y'all all for watching. Make sure you guys like, share, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. All right, and also you can follow me all across your social medias at the Armand Wiggins Show, okay? So until next time, I want you to keep that same energy and I'll see you soon. Peace out.